Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this magic particle effect. It's going to be a fairly straightforward tutorial, so without further ado, let's get to it. Open up Blender, delete the default cube, and we're going to delete the default light. I have got a camera in the scene, set to 0 on the X, Y and Z, so here are the coordinates for my camera. Also, we're going to go to output, and you're going to set your frame rate to 30 frames per second. We're going to be using cycles for this one guys, and I've got my GPU already set. So let's just mute my camera so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view. I'll then hit shift A, add, and we go for empty sphere. I'll then hit shift A, add mesh plane. I'm going to hit R, Y, 90 minus. So it's rotated on the Y axis by negative 90 degrees. I'm then going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit S.01 and hit enter. Tab out of edit mode. I'm going to hit control A and apply the scale, control A and apply the rotation. I hit numpad 1 to go into front view. This is going to be our emitter object. So in your scene collection, I'm going to rename this object to emitter. I'll then hit G, Z, hold down control, snap it to the grid until it intersects with the top of this empty object. I'm then going to hold down shift, left click, select the object and hit control P. And I'm going to set parent to object, keep transform. So now when I grab this object, hit G, the emitter is now parented to that object. Excellent. I'm going to set my end frame to 90 frames. I'll hit numpad 1 to go into front view. I'll select my object data over here and on frame 1 for the empty object on the Y rotation I'm going to add a keyframe. I'll then skip to frame 60 and I'm going to set the Y rotation to 360 degrees. I'll then add another keyframe. We're going to have to edit this a bit so if I rewind and push play you can see it starts off really slow, speeds up and then slows down again. So I'm going to take my cursor to the top left here until I see this crosshair. I'll then hold down my left mouse button. I'm going to drag it across to around about there. I'm then going to click this button here. We're going to change it to the graph editor. Let's just get rid of these panels here. So I just drag these across. And then if I hold down control and my middle mouse button and then scroll down, it zooms in so we can see the whole graph. So with this first handle selected here, I'm going to hit S. 0.5 and that will tighten up the curve there and I'll also box select this one and hit S.5 hit enter so now the acceleration shouldn't be as harsh so I'm going to take my cursor I'm going to take it up to the top left until I see this crosshair I'll then hold down my left mouse button I'm going to drag it across and collapse that window excellent so we're going to need another object in the scene it's going to be the particle itself so I'm going to hit shift A add mesh and we go for icosphere I'm going to keep mine set at a subdivision level 2 you can set yours to 1 if you like I'll collapse this window quick I'll then hit Z shade smooth I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to hit S.01 and then hit enter I'll then tab out of edit mode I'm just going to drag this object down so G Z hold down control snap it to the grid I'm going to grab it out of the way down to about there and we're going to rename this object to particle so my emitter over here the reason why we can't see it in the collections is because we've parented it to the empty object so we have to click this arrow here to open up the empty and there's the emitter so let's get on with making the particle system before we do that I think we should add a subdivision surface on here so go to your modifiers and you can add a subdivision by clicking add modifier generate and then choose subdivision surface alternatively you can click control 2 and that'll add a subdivision surface at level 2 I then go to my particle settings over here I'll then click this plus button to add a new particle system we're going to keep it as an emitter I'm going to set the number of particles to 10,000 we then have the particles starting to spawn on frame 1 and we want them to stop spawning on frame 60 and I want a particle lifetime of 30 frames we'll give it a lifetime randomness of 0.5 we set our end frame to 90 frames so if the last particle is going to spawn on frame 60 and that particle will last for 30 frames that makes 90 so all particles should have disappeared by frame 90 under source I'm going to click use modifier stack and what this does it ensures that all the modifiers above the particle system like the subdivision surface are taking into consideration when calculating the simulation we we'll change it from jittered to random distribution you're going to have to save your file before we can enable the cache options so go to file save as and save it in the file location of your choosing i've already done mine i'll just hit Control s and save so I'm going to deselect use library path and what this does it will actually bake the cache into the blender file itself under velocity I'm going to set the normal value to 4 meters per second and I'll randomize velocity by let's say 5 I'm then going to click my render tab over here I'm going to change it from halo to object and that object is going to be the particle which was the icosphere 
I'm going to skip to the first frame. I'm going to click numpad 1 to go to front view. Now if I push play, you can see all the particles are shooting out. So I'm going to go to physics now and under integration for subframes, I'm going to set this to 8. You can choose anything between 2 to 8. And what this does, it means for every frame on my timeline down here, it's going to calculate 8 subframes. And this just makes the simulation a lot more accurate. If you find your baking is taking too long, maybe set this to a lower number, something like 2 or 4. And for time step, this is the actual speed of the simulation. So by default, it's set to 0.04. I'm going to set mine to 0.002 and then hit enter. And now if I skip back to the first frame to reset my cache and hit play, you can see they're coming out a lot slower. Excellent. So with this emitter object, we're going to duplicate this. So I'm going to hit Shift D, hit Z to drag it on the Z axis, hold down Control, snap it to the grid. I'm going to drag it to the base of the empty object. It's pointing in the wrong direction at the moment. We want to flip this bottom one. So I'm going to hit R, Z, 1, 8, O. And now this one should be shooting out this way. And this one should be shooting out this way. Let's just select both of those. I'm going to click rewind to skip it to frame one. I'm going to hit play. This is what we've got. We need to add one more object into the scene. So Shift A, and we go Mesh, and we'll choose Icosphere. I'm going to hit Z, Shade Smooth, tab into Edit Mode. I'm going to hit S.01, Enter. I'll then tab out of Edit Mode, and we're going to give this the same particle system. Let's just rename these emitter objects. So this one, we'll call Emitter 1. The second one, we'll call Emitter 2. And for this Icosphere in the middle, we'll set this to emitter 3. So with emitter 1 selected and the particle system settings over here, I'm going to rename this to 1. I'm going to rename this to 1, which should be reflective if I click this one. Quickly rename this to 1. And then if we choose the emitter 3, which is the icosphere in the middle, I'm going to click this plus button to add a new particle system. And we'll click this button here and we'll set this to 1. So now they're all sharing exactly the same particle system. The next thing we'll do, I'm just going to select this emitter 1. We're just going to tweak the particle system a bit more. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom until we see field weights. I'll then expand those options and we're going to turn gravity all the way off. I'll then collapse that field weight option so now in the render options down here, I'm going to set the scale to 0.1 and the scale randomness to 0.5. I'll then scroll all the way up to the top. I'm just going to randomly change my seed. I'm going to click this rewind button to skip back to frame 1 to reset the simulation. Make sure I get no errors. I'll then click Bake All Dynamics. Select all my objects. I'm going to hit play. See what we've got. Okay, that looks about right. So let's set up the material for the actual particle itself. So with your particle selected, I've got it selected up here in my collections, which is down here. I'm going to drag my cursor to the bottom left until I see the crosshair. I'll hold my left mouse button and I'm going to drag it all the way up to around about here. Then I'll click this button and we're going to change it to Shader Editor. I hit N to get rid of that panel there. And then I'll click New. And this will add a new material. I'm going to rename my material to Subscribe. Thanks folks, you absolute legends. I'm then going to delete the principal BSDF. I'm going to hit Shift A, Add, and we'll go for Shader, Emission Shader. Shift A, Add, Converter, Color Ramp. Shift A, Add, Converter, Math Node. Shift A, Add, Input, and we go for Particle Info. So we're going to change the Math Node from Add to Divide, and we're going to divide the age by the lifetime and then we'll plug the result from that into the color ramp and we'll plug the color from the color ramp into the color of the emission shader and the emission into the surface of the material output let's set the strength to 25 that should be sufficient so i'm going to select this white flag i'm going to click the plus button i'll click it one more time i'll then select this white flag again and click the plus button so they're all evenly spread and for this first flag over here i'm going to set to a yellow color so i'm going to actually go to rgb maybe i'll make it slightly orange so I'm going to set the green value to 0.5 and the red value to 1. With this second flag, I'm going to set this to red. This third flag, I'm going to set to pink. So that's 100% red, 100% blue. The fourth flag, I'm going to set to blue. And for the last flag, I'm going to set to like a green. Maybe we'll set the green to 1 and the blue to 0.25. Okay, so let's just skip to frame 60. Go to your render settings over here. Under sampling, I'm going to keep the noise threshold at 0.01. If you want a faster render time, you can set this to 0.025 
or even faster, 0.05. So the higher this number, the faster it is to render. I'm going to keep my max sample set to 1024, but under light paths, I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to turn off reflective and refractive core sticks. I'll need to set up my camera as well before rendering. If I re-enable my camera up here, I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into camera view. Let's just drag this down. I'll then go to my object data. I'm going to set the Z location to zero because that will be the center of the screen. I'm also going to frame this up. So I'm going to bring this in to maybe something around about negative three meters. Yours will be different depending on your focal length. Mine's set to 24 mil. So just frame up your scene and then hit F12. This is what we've got so far. So you see the age divide by the lifetime on the shader editor has given us this result. So it doesn't look anything special as of yet. So let's add a bit more magic to this. So go over to your render properties over here. I'm gonna scroll down until you see motion blur. Activate that. And we're gonna set the shutter speed on the motion blur to 4.8. And then under the shutter curve, I'm going to click the first curve, something round about there. And this will basically mean that your motion blur will fade in and it will fade out. So now if I hit F12, we're getting a better result here. Excellent. Maybe I could take my camera out a bit more because some of the sparks are going out of the scene. I want to keep it all framed. So with my camera selected, I go to my object data. I'm just going to scroll this back till maybe I'd say negative 3.2 just to ensure it encompasses the entire scene. We're going to go over to compositing. We're going to click use nodes and then shift a add and we go for filter and we'll choose glare we'll pop the glare node in between the render layer and the image output so it's your composite that you want this viewer node it just basically means that we can view what we're doing i'm going to change it from streaks to fog glow i'm going to set the threshold to 0.1 so it just adds a bit of glow there so i'm going to go back to my layout view one last thing you've got to do is you go to output over here and you're going to choose a file location for your output where you want the images to save. I've got a folder already selected where my images are going to be saved. I'm then going to select PNG, RGB and I'll keep the color depth set to 16. And the reason to choose an image sequence as your output is because if you choose a movie clip, and blender crashes halfway through you've lost everything whereas if you choose an image sequence like png and blender crashes on let's say frame 50 you don't have to render it out from the beginning you can just change your start frame to frame 50 and continue rendering from there so i'm going to choose an image sequence and when you've rendered out your image sequence you simply drag all your images into a video editor of your choice you can use blender i use davinci resolve for all my video editing just make sure that your video editor is set to 30 frames per second to match the frame rate here from here hit Control f12 and that will render out your image sequence so i hope you found this tutorial useful please like and subscribe it really helps my channel that's all for now folks have a great day level up and thanks for watching.